I just thought I'd show you how much water actually comes out. The suspension vessel, as you can see, was flat. There's nothing in there. Whatsoever. Job done. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another version of Plumbing and Heating Live 6. Now in this video there's three different clips. You can go down to the description box below and in the description box you will see what different videos that I have and you can fast forward to each video whichever suits your interest. And the second video is a part two of a video which I did in my last Plumbing and Heating Live. It was in regards to a 100 litre Aviston un unvented cylinder. Yeah, a bit of a tongue twist to that one. So in that video I showed you guys how I approach piping up a cylinder. So I showed you getting my spirit level out and putting the lines and how I prepare it and clips and stuff like that. But in this video, it's the more interesting part. I believe you guys enjoy watching this bit. It's me physically piping it up. So cutting it, measuring it, soldering, bending and stuff like that. So if you haven't seen the previous video, go back to my other one, have a look at that and you will realize this then makes sense. And hopefully you can see how I approach uh, to fit in these cylinders. The third video is a boiler repair. It's a valent boiler, I believe, and they had issues with the pressure. So I showed you how I diagnosed the fault and then ultimately how I fixed the fault. In and around these videos, you're gonna see a few TikTok videos. Now they're not the full version. I've had to take the music out due to copyright. So if you want the full experience, follow, go head over to TikTok, follow me over there. I post every single day, just random things, boiler repairs, plumbing, you know, all of that. Okay, just before I go, um, a message to everybody. So at the minute, I know I make these YouTube videos to help you guys out, but I've been getting a lot of you guys going onto my website, I think. I mean, getting my number from WhatsApp and directly messaging me from there and saying, look, I'm stuck on this. I need help my portfolio and stuff like that. Now, I, without offending you guys, I don't have time to get back to everybody who messages me. Look, if you need my help, just head over to my Instagram, message me over on Instagram or use my social media platforms. Um, messaging me on, on WhatsApp and stuff like that. I, I primarily want that for my customers. And if any, any of you guys want to want me to work for you, just so you know, I don't work outside of Coventry unless it's a really big job. Because I've been getting a lot of job offers and stuff like that, Birmingham, Leicester and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so just so you know, if you're in Cov and you want me, reach out to me on WhatsApp or use the website form. Um, if you just want help in regards to you know advice or anything like that, you know reach out to me on Instagram But yeah, I just thought I'd put that in this video because recently I've been getting a lot of you guys messaged me and uh, I don't want to be rude by blanking you guys off. So this is just for you guys Right there, you pulled one, two, three. 290, so relatively easy, but advanced on two pipes, and then the kick is very advanced. So, all you've got to learn to do now is learn how to measure. Passover. Measures. Your passovers we're going to do as well now, because we're going to do a passover anyway. That's how we you to put that in the bender. 15. 15 would be that system from the middle of the bend. 
going to be 23. Take away 2, which will be 22, 21. 20. Been one continuous bend if you had got that in, yeah. and then we would have put the kick there. That would have been crazy. That would have been a mad. Yeah. So that's done. back here with another valent and um, the issue that we've got here is we've got an issue with the pressure so the tenant's saying that the pressure keeps going really high and they're having to vent from this radiator here uh, in order to bring the pressure back down and they're also saying randomly the pressure will drop itself so the issue i know straight away just from saying that i know there's nothing wrong with the boiler itself it's going to be a filling issue yeah 
So I've come here and I've checked this um, under the filling loop. Whack your finger under there, dry it down with the tissue and you can see the filling loop is passing. After checking that, I've checked the PRV. And if you have a look, let me get some light in there for you. So you can have a look. Um, you'll notice that the PRV is filthy. You can see that the PRV, I don't know if you can see that. You see that up there, the PRV is actually dirty. So what I'm gonna do in this job, we're changing the filling loop. Change the filling loop. We don't actually change the, need to change the whole loop. We can just change this valve here, um, which lets the water in. And then we're gonna change the PRV. So when it comes to draining the boiler down, I usually like to do it from these filters. But if I was to drain this water from this filter here, then it would drain all the upstairs circuit as well. This would be the easiest way to get a washing machine and a hose under here. But instead, I'm just gonna close off the flow returns and then do it from the actual boiler valves itself. So I've turned the water off already. That, that we found that stop clock typically in the bloody back. Look where it is, right in the back there. Really hard to get to, but yeah, I've turned that water off. So we're gonna change the filling loop and uh, get this PRV changed. All right, first things first, let's turn the water off from here. First things first, with an eight mil, my little spanner, let's isolate this. Oops, oops, it is, see? So I've just realized I haven't, I didn't record me doing what I was just doing. So what I've done, I've got this um, thingy up here and I've closed the flow here. And I've also, let me get you guys some more light. So I've closed the flow and I've closed the return simply by just putting this in, giving it a twist. And then with my eight mil little ratchet, I've opened up the drain off underneath the boiler. Yeah? So that's sorted. And as you can see, it's drained as much as it can. The system's not the cleanest. And now we're gonna pump the vessel up, just get all the water. That's on. Now we can start pumping. The suspension vessel, as you can see, was flat. There was nothing in there whatsoever. So this needed pumping. Usually, when the expansion vessel's flat, you'll see marks around this auto air vent. Let me put my light on so you can see it. You see that marks around the auto air vent? That's usually a good, that tells you that the expansion vessel is flat. So the vessel's flat, it's now pumping up. It's on, what is it, one bar? Just over one bar, yeah. And it's gonna burst, it's gonna come out. So that's been pumped up to one bar now. That bottle there was full, we've had to empty it. So that's sorted. Now, get a bit of fairy for your leak detection to make sure that this pin up here is not leaking, yeah? So, let's get a bit more there. Any bubbles, and make sure you change that pin. Very easy to change, and it's very important that you check this. So that's sorted. As you can see, we're not getting any bubbles, so that's sand. So now the boiler is now being drained, yeah? It's been drained, expansion vessel's full. We now we can whip that PRV out and clean the AAV. Boiler's drained, let's whack this PRV out. One pin that comes out. Undo the bottom bit, which I've already undone. That should come out. You'll have quite a bit of water there. Coming out. and then plug it in like that, nice and fast. So that is PRV sorted. Usually I'd get a little wet vac as well, so I'm gonna go get the wet vac and I'll wet vac all this out. Usually I would have had that ready, but because I'm recording, I just thought I'd show you how much water actually comes out. 
which is quite a bit. And you've got to make sure you don't let the PCB get wet or anything like that as well. Anything underneath is protected. And then make sure you put this rubber back on underneath the actual PRV. So I wet wrapped it out. Another thing you guys can do with these valence, you can take that screw out there. You see that screw there? If you look under here, there's a screw right there. If you take that screw out, it will allow a little bit of water to drain and you can drain it out through there. But I always just like to get a wet vac, clean it out. It's faster, more efficient. So that's done. PRV has been changed, auto air vents been um, clean, expansion vessels now recharged. So the boiler side is done. What I've got to do now is just change this filling loop. Now in the van, I haven't got one of these um, isolation things yet. Uh, I've only got an isolation valve with the screw point in it and I don't want to put that. So I'm going to change this whole filling loop. I'm going to use this filter to drain it down. Well, let's, before I do that, let's just turn these back on. So I've closed the, the drain off. Now it's turning this back on. That's how you know the air vent's decent. You probably didn't hear it, but I heard a gust of air coming out of that air vent. That's why you should always clean that air vent. Whenever you're doing any work, an expansion vessel will drain it down. Clean the air vent. So the easiest way to drain would be, because there's no drain off here. And if there was, to be fair, I wouldn't use it. This is the easiest way. Just get this filter ready thing off here and uh, get this on it, washing machine hose. If you see my videos, it's one of my most used hoses. Use that to relieve as much pressure straight into the sink. And then may, whenever you do that, make sure you always dry the middle of that, yeah? Get tissue and it's dry. So it's all connected, everything's isolated again now. So let's put the pressure into the system. Actually, we need to turn the water on. So everything's now is connected, filling loop, filter. We put all that back together, so that's sorted. Now we're gonna turn the boiler on and fill it up. So turn the boiler on while holding the plus. Damn, that hasn't worked. So turn the boiler on. Hold the plus down, turn the boiler on. That's no, not working, good. Let's try it all right again. I would normally press the reset button, but the reset doesn't work on this. And you see here, normally you hold the reset. That's worked. Hold the reset, press the plus, P0 section, go all the way to P06. That's filling mode now, yeah? So it's diverter mark. Diverter motor has now moved to the mid position. We can fill it up. Turn that on. Turn that on. Get it all the way up to one bar, 1.5. 1.5, 1.6. That's about right there. 
that's sorted. So again, hold the reset, hold the plus. So press, press the reset while holding the plus and then let go. So reset, this board is a bit slow. Reset with the plus, no, it's not happening. Reset, it's easier just to do it by turning the border off. So turn the border off, back on while holding the plus. See them two dots there. Let's get it into P00 now. Let's deaerate the system. So now the pump's just gonna run one way, run the other way, and um, get all the air out of the system. So once that's done and you're happy with that, same thing again, hold the reset button. That's it, while you're holding the plus, two dots there. And then let's get it into P01. Let's get into P01 and let's check the ratio of CO levels. So we're checking the flu, the combustion readings on here through the flu. It's 9.0, 8.5. So the ratio is 9.0, 0 is over 9, bang on. CO levels are fine. PPM is fine and the CO levels 9.0. If you look in the manufacturer's instructions, you can see it just about here case after five seconds with the, the removed it's meant to be 9.0 yeah plus or minus one so that's bang on and then it tells you what it wants um, on the co so it's minus 250 and also the ratio yeah so that's bang on there so while that's happening there while it's on max now i'm going to do a gas rate So to do a gas for it, these ones are quite easy because you're just looking at the number of the turns on that dial. So I'll get my app up on here. My little, I use the backseat tool, but it's the easiest thing to do. I'll wait until it goes there. Set Imperial. I'll wait until it gets to that number three and start there. Start that again because it was wrong. So I'll wait now for the gas rate. And it goes to that bottom bit there where it says 0 0.5. Once it gets to 1.5, I'll start it. So I've started it right now. Now I'll wait till that dial goes all the way back round. And then I'll press stop and get result. That's the easiest way to check the gas rate to see how much gas this boiler is consuming. So press stop, get result. So if you have a look underneath the boiler, this is the Valent Ecotech Pro 2. And you can see the ratings on here. You see the ratings on here, yeah. So it should be about 28 kilowatts. And if you have a look here, you just about see it, but I've got 28 kilowatts gross. So that's bang on this. The gas rate's fine. The serial levels are fine. We could check the minimum now as well. Um, same way to check minimum, hold the reset, didn't work this time. That's it, hold, re press reset, hold the plus again, get it into P02 or P2 on this. And the same thing there, we're just going to check the the ratio but on this one we're, what we're mainly looking at is the the parts per million on this one and the ratio is fine while we were doing that Curtis was filling out the service and maintenance form 
with boiler. The job done now on this, so we've sorted it out, replaced the filling loop, PRV, check combustion levels are fine and so they are. Just another tip for you guys, if you want to figure out how old these boilers are, it's this second, it's the third and fourth, so 2011. So all done now, change the filling loop, change PRV, there's no issue with the pressure now, you can see, let's reset it, put it back to what the customers had it on, what did they have this on anyway? That was a bit low, so we turn up about 60, we we'll leave that to about 50, so that's sand, that's all sorted, no leaks, no issues. Let me show you guys this PRV. So you can see there, that's the telltale signs that the PRV has been dripping. So you can literally just undo a PRV nut. If you see things like this, you know it needs to be changed. Or go outside, follow the, the PRV pipe outside and see if it's been dripping. Or put your hand on it, if it gets warm and the heating's on, that's another way to check it out. So let me just quickly open this up and see what it's like inside. So you guys can see here, that's why it was leaking, because the seating is so dirty and in there. So if you guys haven't got a PRV, what I could have done was just took this PRV out and I could have just cleaned that seating there with like a flathead screwdriver, clean this out, put it all back together, and then this would have been fine. As long as there was no issue with this spring, because I've done it before and it still leaked and I realized that the spring has lost its tension. So usually nine times out of 10, you can just clean it. But if you can't, then just change the whole body. I had the whole body with me. Um, with the valence, I usually just change it, to be fair. Uh, change the whole body. If it's a back suit or anything like that, I clean it out. Um, yeah, so this is sorted now. This job's done. Let's move on to the next one. You have a little bit of water come out, but not a lot. So we've took the system off. A little bit of crap there. Nothing to be concerned about. So remove this down the washer. Have a look inside the last idiot most likely builder put some silicon in here you don't need no silicon here so i'm going to chop that out Before I put it in, just to let you know, no silicon is needed. As you can see, it's got a rubber washer underneath it. This is all we need to suffice a good seal, and nothing else is needed yet. Because I'm recording, I'm not thinking. 
I'm also fasting as well. Um, so we need to put this plate on that. So you get this plate. Work the plate on. nice and tight but not too tight you go too tight you're gonna snap that remember it's plastic on plastic yeah so that's sorted in here I get my rubber washer and also get these screws in that yeah so we're gonna replace everything whenever I do toilet repairs I always just replace the screws and everything just for peace of mind so I'll do a clean this seat in here and then I'll whack it all back on also, another good thing to check is this washer on this uh, fill valve. He's going to put it back together, it could leak. It's easy to change this fill valve now if he was going to, but that looks fine. And always remember to put the washer on now. I don't push it the whole way in, I literally just put it on the edge so it pushes itself down and it seals. This is always the trickiest part. You've got to get these screws into this hole. So with the nuts and the washers, it goes this way. Whenever I'm tightening, I'll always tighten one side first, and the other side, and I keep going back. One fourth. It's nice and tight. Let's get the flexi connected. Let's change the push button because it's going to be a different mechanism here, so we've got to change it. Ba bang. Give that a little clean. I'll just turn the water back on. Clean up nicely. Let's just check the overflow level.
needs to climb a little bit higher. This is the main thing now, is the flush test. Flush it, have a look if you've got any leaks. If you have, sort it out. Well, I haven't. Need to lift this. Oh yeah. Always, guys, if you like the video, like the video. If you don't like the video, dislike the video. And yeah, please subscribe to the channel.